accused will refuse to pay what was awarded as a civil damages in this case. Uh, you have, as secretary, as a prosecution, you have control over uh, the criminal case. What is the remedy under these circumstances? Would a writ of execution be valid? Mr. Uh, Mr. Senator, this is obviously referring to the civil aspect of the case. So there is a judgment rendered by the court which has become final and executory. Yes. So the proper remedy would be uh, for the issuance of a writ of execution. The writ of execution. Will you now instruct your prosecutors to move for a writ of execution from the trial court in order that a writ of execution can be issued and levy on the property of Sanchez family? The prosecutors of the DOJ handle solely the criminal aspect of the case. So I suppose that uh, 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 the private prosecutors, if any, who handle this case will have uh, 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 a... We can debate point. on that, uh, Mr. Okay. Secretary. Okay. But just as a matter of policy, mm -hmm. your department has full control, the fiscal has full control over the proceedings. and. Even if the civil aspect, you cannot just go to court and ask for execution without the concurrence, at the very least, of the public prosecutor. But that is uh, but, uh, assuming that I am wrong and you are correct. Should it, would it justice dictate that your prosecutor should move for the issuance of a writ of execution for the Sanchez family to pay 12 million 671 thousand? 900 pesos, which is already final and executory. As a matter of policy, as a matter of justice. As a matter of justice, yes. Okay. As a matter of uh, legal, um, you know. Uh, yes, okay, as a matter of justice, yes. Yes. Will you be serving justice by directing your prosecutors now to file a petition for a writ of execution? Not to order them to file a, uh, a motion for writ of execution. But uh, as I said, this is debatable, uh, uh, Mr. Senator. What, the is wrong, what is wrong with uh, the prosecutors moving for a rate of execution? Let the court deny it and say uh, it is the private, it is the counsel for the uh, private complainants who should do it. But you should initiate it as a matter of justice. Would you agree? We can. Um, Try doing that. Uh, of course, we know the possibility that uh, the court may, yes. may ask legal standing, may question yes. legal standing, but we, we may actually do that. Or yes. we, we may assist the private counsel handling the civil aspect of the case. That's the best that we can do. Gosh. But if you, I mean, if the suggestion is in the interest of justice, may our prosecutors uh, 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 take upon themselves the matter prosecuting in a certain sense the civil side of the case, then so be it. And let's leave it to the judge. Yes, let's so. leave it to the judge, leave it to uh, Mr. S uh, the family of Sanchez to oppose the application of your prosecutors. But we should take the initiative to deliver justice in this particular case because it is so unjust that here is Mayor Sanchez who as is asking for clemency and who refuses to pay 12.6 million pesos. Would you agree with that? I just have a little problem, Mr. Senator, about uh, this issue about execution. Because this case was decided way back in 1990... 1993, March 1993. 1993. And uh, affirmed in 1993. And there have been many uh, justices of the department, I mean, uh, secretaries of the Department of Justice, who should have taken this step long ago. Yes. Why? Because there is a prescriptive period for execution of judgments. Oh, see it. Well, Based you... on judgments, you have a period of 10 years within yes. which to enforce it by, by, uh, by action. Okay. Five years by mere motion. So it's really up to the people who are handling this case before, long before, not now. Because there is a prescriptive period to do so. Mr. Uh, Mr. Secretary, why don't you let the court decide on the prescriptive period? Why don't you let the Sanchez family oppose a writ of execution on the ground that it has prescribed? But at least to show to the people that we are after uh, the, the, that we are consistent in our pursuit for justice, initiate, initiate 
a writ of execution, a, 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 an application for writ of execution with the court, and leave it to the court, leave it to Sanchez, leave it to the Supreme Court to decide as whether it is valid or not. Would you agree? We can do so. Uh, Thank you. Now. Uh, the point is well made and we agree also here. Huh? Strongly, sternly. <laughs> now, just one more point. You know, in the last two hearings, doubt has been raised as to whether or not the, uh, the, the, those who are guilty of heinous crimes are eligible for good conduct time allowance. But there is no dis dispute that you are supposed to approve the releases of those prisoners convicted of heinous crimes. Is that correct? Under the Vucor Act of 2013 and under Department Order 953. If we go by the provisions of the Bucor Act, there is nothing there actually that uh, provides that the final approval for the release of a, uh, of a uh, person who has served his sentence has to go through the Department of Justice for final approval because it's very clear in a particular provision of that law that, it, uh, that it's the Chief of the Bureau of Corrections who will uh, have the final say on the approval of a released person based on the expiration of his sentence. But uh, there was this administrative, uh, rather, department order. It's a department order, yes. not really part of the law itself. That somehow uh, modifies it by saying that if the person to be released uh, is not, was not sentenced to reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment, then the chief of the Bureau of Corrections would approve the release of that PDL. However, according to that department order, if the person sentence, uh, was sentenced to reclusion perpetua or life imprisonment, then uh, the matter will have to be uh, brought up to the attention of the Secretary of Justice who will have the final approval. But that's by virtue of an, a department order only. Now, whether that department order has been modified, amended, or revoked, that has been the subject of our discussion yesterday. And uh, there has been some suggestion that uh, there were exchange, there was an exchange of communications after 2015 that would somehow uh, revert to the original uh, arrangement of uh, just re uh, delegating the matter, that matter, even that matter about a uh, person sentenced to reclusion perpetual or life imprisonment to the chief of the Bureau of Corrections. But uh, as I said, we have not seen such uh, written communications uh, yes. to that effect. Now, under Section 8 of the Bureau of Corrections Act of 2013, it says the DOJ shall retain the authority over the power to review, reverse, revise, or modify the decisions of the Bureau Corps in exercise of its regulator, regulatory and quasi-judicial functions. Interpreting this particular provision, Department Order Number 953 specifically states that the authority of the Director General of the Bureau of Corrections to release, release national prisoners shall not apply to prisoners inmates sentenced to life imprisonment or reclusion perpetual or high-risk inmates whose release due to expired sentences shall only be implemented upon the prior approval of the Secretary of Justice. This means that this is the standing interpretation of your department on how Section 8 of the Bureau Act of 2013 should be interpreted. And unless you revise this, uh, Mr. Secretary, this is what the procedure that should be followed. And failure to follow this procedure is an improper release of uh, prisoners sentenced to life imprisonment. That is a view that I am submitting to you, Mr. Secretary. It's up to you to consider it or not, but I believe that, by in, but that your interpretation uh, of the of the view for Act of 2013, as found in Department Order 953, unless revoked, is binding on the department, and therefore the release of Sanchez and of the Chong uh, sisters' uh, murderers should be subject to your approval. That's all we're saying. We are submitting that uh, 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 so that we can 
uh, pro we can have justice, we can uh, uh, pursue, we can implement this justice system properly. Thank you, Mr. Chair. For the record, I think in the case of Penalosa, in the sa ng ombudsman yung properties nila Sanchez. Are you aware of that? In fact, I think about uh, 22 properties or 12 properties. Kay Penalosa yun, ha? Uh, same, that's an ombudsman, ombudsman case, uh, I suppose. Yes, no. Uh, yeah, uh, well. Pero point na ni Senator Delon, and I agree with him, is that why will we leave it to the family to pursue it, sila Sarmenta o sila Gomez? Napatayo yan. Imagine 26 years na, hindi pa nagbabayad. Hindi naman tama yun. Di ba? Eh, nakakalakad nga yung mga preso. Hindi ko na sila sabi si Mr. Sanchez. Yung mga Chinese, nakakalakad. Tapos, o yung nakalabas, where the families are caught holding the empty bag without even to, to the Sarmentas and the Gomez. They're not really hot, hot sa pera, but at the same time, simple justice dictates that we should get them. And I I would like to, uh, I was going to ask you that uh, as uh, some of my final questions. And I support Senator Giron on that basis because it's here on my notes. Finally, I just have to say a few, with the permission of uh, Senator Tolentino. Uh, we already cited several laws, uh, several cases involving uh, relief, including former Congressman Alosos. She was given uh, clemency by President Macapagal Arroyo, but binalik siya because hindi completo yung service of sentence. Mali ang computation. Malay ang combination. So, I think we should really aggressively pursue that we lasso all these people na pinawalan because that's a slap on the face of uh, this country. And I know you're going to do that. Uh, no, you. Pero kailangan na, eh, meron mga talagang, they become very antsy. The other point I'd like to make, and again, this is not a criticism but a comment, Bakit kailangan natin hintayin pa ang Supreme Court? In my point, should we arrest everybody and let them file a case in the Supreme Court if they want to? Sa akin talaga, ganun eh. Ito yung point ni Senator Dunon. Uh, the family doesn't even want to pay for damages. Let us not punish society. We should not be idle and let these persons charged with heinous crimes be in society because we have a fear that the recall will be an exposed fact to law. I don't think so. Ay, yun talaga, yun ang sinasabi ko kanina, legal brinksmanship, sir. Ayaw mong demand na sila, uh, uh, huli natin sila, pag-demand na sila. And, so be it. Huwag natin ipasa sa Supreme Court yung, yung, uh, yung decision dito. And uh, that's my plea. And of course, I, I know and I trust in your capability. I know that you have a plan. I can see it, no? But, uh, hindi lang siguro masabi dito. Now, may I ask you a personal question now? Do you agree with what I said? Because you're a man. Yes, we have a plan. But, thank you. Uh, thank you. I know that. I just, I just want to be sure because we're going to be able to do this. I just have two final questions. And this is not personal, uh, Mr. Pailodon. No? You are the chairman, you are the secretary of justice. You have administrative supervision. Ang hindi ko maintindihan dito, and sinabi nito ni Senator Soto, kay Senator President Soto, and I agree with him wholeheartedly. We make laws here. Pag dinaan na sa IRR, napapalitan yung batas. Many times. Even my, my bill on, uh, ayun siya, magagalit na maibig sa akin, pero okay lang. Yung plates. Kaso, uh, katulad siya, binaril nga yun si Traya. Riding in tandem na naman. Walang plaka, o oh, maliit yung plaka, hindi mahuhuli. Oh, hanggang ngayon, hindi pa, hindi pa natin nahuhuli. Inihintay natin yung IRR. And uh, I, I don't want to quit. The other day I said, the, the tragedy of injustice is when the people seeking justice gives up. We cannot give up. We cannot make the other side win. Now, I ask you now, as Secretary of Justice, shouldn't Secretary Pyldon, under Secretary Pyldon, shouldn't he have consulted you regarding the release of all these people because he is your, you are his boss? He said that, Nakakatakot talaga na siya lang, kahit na pa sinabi doon sa batas, na siya lang. Sa rules and regulations, may department order, 973, 953, dapat nagkukonsulta siya para we don't end up in this fiasco. And so, I'm calling you down on that aspect. I'm sorry, but even as a friend, this is a, wala naman ko dito, this is a, 
very objective uh, handling. I just want to make sure that the Secretary of Justice, and we had a big fight here on whether who has the last say, OSG or the Secretary of Justice. And I think that bill that was presented here by the administration, we we approved that bill, OSG, complete lateral request. I think that na Vito yan, dahil may naglabi na dapat OSG may sarili in the Department of Justice. This is precisely why we want to make sure na ang Department of Justice, ang boss when it comes to that, isa lang ang magsasabi, isa lang ang magpukumpas. Now, kung may say sila pahil doon o kung sino maman dyan, I think that will really be a sad day and it's already, we're having sad days because of that. Don't you agree? And I really would have preferred if uh, the matter was consulted with the Department of Justice. No, but I think in the far as Commissioner Pahildor is concerned, in the future, dapat lahat ang Bureau of Prison, pending this uh, uh, suspension and the setting aside of the IRR uh, that uh, Senator Method sort of suggested, I, I suggest that in no uncertain terms, in spite of the 97, uh, 935, 975, 953, in no uncertain terms, that must be clear already. Otherwise, you're going to have all these problems. Now, my final question, two actually. The law says, and the, uh, the, uh, the IRR says, dapat may computerization. Again, this is an empty law. Sinasabi nyo, meron na. That is my lament in government. I've been in government for a long time and I, my staff knows that. All my staff, all the department. When you are saying, ginagawa na, present progressive, palagi ang sagot, hindi natatapos. Now, hindi po ba simple-simple? And I would like to show you Iowa. Na kung merong computer, Iowa is a state in the American Union, nakalagay lahat kung sino ang nakakulong, kung ano record niya, kung naparol na siya, and it is available to the public. That is part of our, to, to specify, na hindi na makapakailam yung IRR, and since we are about to have the budget of the Department of Justice here, gusto namin isama na yan para magkaroon na talaga na hindi na mangyayari ito dahil makikita ng mga biktima, makikita ng mga kamag-anak, hindi na sila magre-rely on hearsay o lalabas na yung asawa nyo. Nakalagay ito kung sino ang naka-apply at kung ilang taon na, at pati computation, di magkakamali as in the Hadosos case. So, kailangan magawa na po yan. Eh, hindi ginagawa. In my book, in the Blue Ribbon, that is malfeasance, non-feasance, misfeasance on the part of the, the DOJ, the, uh, the Bureau of Prisons, the BJMP, can you imagine, sir, lahat ang nakakulong sa mga lokal? Kaya nga ginawa itong law na ito, lumalang pa sa maximum sentence na andun pa, nabubulok. Eh kung meron ngayon nakalagay sa, sa, even sa lokal, meron silang computer, in public, makikita, hindi mangyayari yan. So it seems so logical, so easy to do. Why are you doing it? Is it a case of budget? Or is it a case of ayaw malaman? Because I keep hearing my fellow senators say, malaking pera yan. Pagka naka, nahawakan ng isang tao yung isang malakas dyan sa loob ng preso, ma, ma, magugut lang contact time allowance. At hindi lang ito nangyayari sa panahon ni Senator ni Yusak Pahendon. Noong araw pati nilalakad yung mga napapando ng Pangulo. Yung nakukommute ang sentence, may nakaran yan. Alam ko kung sino lumakad sa commutation ng, ng uh, pumatay sa father ko. Et, I am not going to be helpless, and that's why we have to have this is statistical data, digitization of our uh, laws on penology here para alam natin, at pati na nga rin doon sa Philippine Statistical Authority, pag may namatay, alam ka agad ng PhilHealth para hindi siya magdodobly bayad. This is the era of information technology, and we should have this. Don't you agree? I certainly agree. As a matter of fact, uh, if I'm not mistaken, part of uh, the budget uh, request of the Bureau of Corrections has something to do with the management information system or their computerization program. But it's taken them so many years. 2013 pa ito. 2019 na yun. I, I, I guess uh, 
They have an existing MIS except that hindi uh, ginagamit. Well, uh, I'm not too sure whether it's fully exploited or there are uh, suppliers who, uh, that need to... ko kanina ba, Mr. Secretary, sorry ha. Narinig ko rito. Now I approve. In an hour, I disapprove. Di ba niyo? Pag kami approve, ba't malalaman ka agad? Di ba? Pag nalaman na yun, then madadali yung madadali. So, that is my plea na dapat magawa yan and I hope... Uh, uh, I wish Dr. was here because the budget is going to be raised. I certainly will support that and I will even suggest that. I just need your help kung magkano yung kailangan dyan. Di po ba? Ayan ang nakalagay yung computer temple, template and manual, the view court, BJMP and provincial jails. Dapat sabi niyo si Lidia, shall design and use a computer generated or automated template to monitor the progress of detainees or prisoners convicted by final judgment capable of incorporating time allowances that may be granted to each of them. In addition, a written computation table or manual preventing imprisonment or service of centers incorporating time allowance shall be prepared and used as the primary official reference by the BUCOR, BJMP, and provincial deals. At the same time, Mr. Secretary, I would suggest that you monitor monthly that the BUCOR submit to you hanggang sa boom system yung mga monthly na lalabas o sinasuggest nila lalabas para hindi biglang bubukol 11,000 lumabas tapos ngayon hahanapin natin gagasos tama yung tanong kanina kapo ni Senator Lacson magkano ba ang ginagasos sa atin para mahuli itong mga drug uh, pushers ito na Chinese tapos mawawalan lang so to my mind napaka-importante itong system na ito para talaga ma-prevent yan ano po? now is there any reason why we should not charge uh, BUCOR, BJMP, and provincial jails for malfeasance or misfeasance and unfeasance because of your failure after six years not to be able to do this computer system? And the Secretary Peldon, do you have an answer? Or does uh, Secretary have a better answer? Well, uh, to be frank, uh, Mr. Chair, I really am not uh, very sure about the state of compliance by the various agencies mentioned in the law regarding the provision on, on uh, computerization and digitalization. So I cannot really answer the question of whether there is basis to charge them with malfeasance or misfeasance. It really all but that, that is what we're going to decide here. Uh, but you obviously know that this is vital. Yes, there is no question that this uh, provision of the bill is something of the law, is something that, that should really be implemented to the fullest because that will eliminate a lot of human interaction when that system is in place. As you know, there's every effort being made by the Supreme Court and I commend them to computerize. Diba? Para alam natin lahat ang cases. In fact, I even have a bill na lahat ng police cases malagay sa isang computer para alam ko saan court na ba siya. In fact, one court in every province should be dedicated to police cases para nalalaman ng tao, para may nalalaman natin kung ano nangyayari. Or for that matter, the computerization should include, hindi pa nagbabayad ng danyos perwisos itong mga tao pumatay na ito. And therefore, it is behooves the government to protect the people that were killed para sa ganon, pabayaran naman yung mga tao. Di ba? Nakita ko, mayroong 195,000 for judicial fees pero may 3 million kada pamilya uh, na Sarmenta at Gomez do sa decision. So, I just want to make those points. Do you have an answer, Mr. Uh, Yusak Meldon? Concur with the Secretary's answer, sir. And in addition, we have a limited uh, computer capability at the Bureau right now, minimal to the records uh, monitoring of uh, of the PDLs. Uh, as simple as when you generate, uh, want to generate the data of the PDLs, just put the prison number and it can automatically generate. So it's still very limited, not as sophisticated as uh, the one you've just shown, Your Honor. But uh, I will review the ISP of the Bureau if it has a uh, program to uh, implement similar uh, uh, computerization, Your Honor. I recommend to... But you the... agree it can be done, right? Yes, sir. It can it be done. It will be done. Yes, sir. Right. It can be done. Uh, now, just one final question whether you're trying to get the... Uh, do sa Supreme Court decision, ma'am, sino po yung Elvira na mistress? Huwag kayo magagalit sa akin, ha? Luwag ba sa Supreme Court decision, public record yan? 
na yun ang ginamit na alibay ni Mayor Sanchez na nandun siya nung nangyari yung kay uh, nung nangyari kay uh, Juan kay uh, Aileen at saka kay Alan I was the one So are you the common law wife? Yes, I'm the common law wife for well, the Dapat doon sinabi niyo kalina yan kasi medyo nalito ako no? So uh, let the record state that Alvira here is the common law wife and in the Supreme Court decision which we all read here nakalagay kayo anahan doon Uh, that is why, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I had to ask the question because kailangan lalabas sa atin eh. Uh, I'm also sorry na I have to cite all the lobbying effort that you made because when we get a record here, we have to act on it. Kaya nga, nakita ko may record, may nagsasabi, pati nga mama ni Congress Senator Raimi, sinabi ko, para malinaw, wala tayo tinatago. And I think they don't mind because natural naman sa mga iba mga leaders sa atin na nagre-recommend. Dahil yun kultura natin. So having said that, Mr. President, uh, I, just one very quick question from Senator Lacson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. With the permission of our colleagues, be before it escapes my mind, because I forgot to uh, ask this follow-up question uh, to leave for another committee hearing. Uh, you said that you transmitted this address to Yosek Fairburn. Since you, have trans you transmitted officially the release order, there must be an official recall. Do you have that document recalling that order? I verbally instructed my staff to stop the process and recall the papers. Isn't it a correct procedure that when you officially transmit a document, it necessitates an official recall of that document? You cannot just do that verbally. I did, I did it verbally. There's none. There's none. There's none. I did it verbally. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, uh, the Honorable Ronaldo de la Rosa, Ronald de la Rosa, better known as The Rock. The Rock Mo, the stone. The Rock. The Rock. <laughs> a, a rock is bigger than a stone, no? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I just would like to ask Yusik uh, Paildon. Yung bang uh, na-release mo na apat na drug lord na andun ngayon sa BI, uh, Bureau of Immigration, uh, General Morente is here. We... Ah, lima. Yung lima. O pati may isa pa galing sa Dabao. Yo, so, yung, wala na ako. Uh, excluding doon sa galing sa Dabao. Yung apat lang na nasa BI ngayon. Are they coming from uh, Building 14? Well, uh, I would like to... The delayed Commissioner uh, Morante just arrived, so I have to put him on the road. The debate is still coming. Your Honor, we have, not, we have not received any invitation, Your Honor. Huh? We have not received any invitation. Was that in open court? Open. Yesterday. Yesterday. That's all right. Don't, don't argue with me. I think... Uh, Just, just stand up and uh, raise your right hand. hand. You solemnly swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth in this investigation. Thank you, sir. Oh, because I put your BIA, so I know that I'm si Senator. Uh, yes, Mr. Chairman. To you, Sir Pendo, na yung bang apat na drug lord galing sa Building 14? Uh, I was just informed, Your Honor, that it did, they did not came from uh, Building 14. It's from the Building 1D, Your Honor. The max inside maximum, Your Honor. Ang mabuti naman. Kasi, uh, just in case, just in case, ma-approve by this, uh... Aguila! 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 Magandang tanghali Pilipinas, tuloy po tayo sa ating mga mahalagang balita. Buco Chief Nicanor Peldo, nanindigyang walang bad record si dating mayor, Antonio Sanchez, kaya nilagdaan ang kanyang release order. Ang detalye po mula kay Mean Corvera. Mean? Diyan sa pagpapatuloy nga nitong joint hearing ng Blue Ribbon at uh, Justice Committee and Human Rights, ibinaungkat ang uh, 
bakit nilagdaan itong si uh, Bucor Director ni Canol Maeldon ang uh, pagpapalaya para kay uh, dating uh, Kalawan Mayor Antonio Sanchez. Depensa ni uh, Maeldon, malinis kung ano ang record, ni uh, Sanchez kahit pa nahulian ito ng sabong sa loob ng kanyang kubol sa New Village Station. Ito raw yung naging batayan sa uh, kaya pinirmahan niya ang release order ni Sanchez. Sabi ni Feldon, ang records raw ang pinagbabatayan sa competitions na mga maaring ma ma mapaikling sentensya batay sa itinatakda ng good conduct time allowance law. Pero nung question ni Senator Dillon kung may issue ng corruption o negligence sa pagpapalaya kay Sanchez, igilid ni Feldon na nakita niya lang ang sinasabing violation si Sanchez sa mga news reports at uh, pero wala itong uh, malinaw na record. Iginig pa ni Sir Aldo na nilagdaan niya ang memorandum para masimula ng proseso ng pagpapalaya ng Sanchez pero binawi ito dahil naniniwala raw siya na hindi ito entitled sa naging benefit, or na maging beneficiary ng bata. Pero question ni Sir Dorting Lacson, bakit niya pinirmahan ang release order kayo hindi pala siya kumbinsido na pumasa ito sa mga qualifications ng DCCA law. Sabi nila kung hindi ito sariling inisyatibo ni Paeldon dahil nahin ko ang pagpapalaya kay Sanchez dahil sa utos ng uh, Pangulo. Lagi sa rin sa pagbinig ang asawa ng dating alkalde na si Mrs. Elvira Sanchez. Pinukusto ng mga senador kung sino sa NBP ang kausap nito na nagsabing palalayain ang dating alkalde noong August 20. Sabi ni Mrs. Elvira nagpunta sa NBP noong August 21 dahil may nagsex sa kanya na lalayan na raw yung kanyang asawa. Pero nang kasinin ito ni Drillon kung sino ang nagsas, hindi na naraw maalala. Nang hindi ni Drillon ang kanyang telepono para tingnan ang mensahe, sabi ni Minus Elvira, tinanggal niya raw ang SIM card at sinira ang kanyang telepono dahil nakatanggap siya ng mga death threats matapos ang paghinig ng Senado kahapon. Pero babala ni Drillon, malalaman din ng Senado kung nagsisinungaling ito. Pinuha ng Senado yung uh, kanyang numero at uh, para sa kaukulang research. Inamin naman ni Ginang Elvira na matagal niya nang nilalakad ang pagpapalaya kay dating kalawan mayor Sanchez at hindi na mabigyan ng executive clemency. At tunayan simulat raw siya uh, sa mayor ng San Pablo, Laguna kay dating first lady Imelda Marcos at Justice Arturo Brion para sa rekomendasyon ng good moral character ng kanyang asawa. Kasama sa kanilang silatan sina Senator Bongo at Pangulong Duterte habang ang kanyang anak naman ang sumulat kay Presidential Spokesman Salvador Panelo. Kinumpirma ni Reynaldo Bayang ng Board of Pardons and Parole na natanggap niya ang sulat ni Panelo sa DPP at eh, nirefer ito para sa Executive Clemency. Wala naman daw balak ang pamilya ni Sanchez sa bayaran ng 12 milyong pisong danyos para sa pamilya ng mga biktima batay sa utos ng korte at giniit na wala raw kasalanan ng kanyang asawa. Aminado si Justice Secretary Miranda Guevara na hindi maaaring panghimasukan ng gobyerno ang paghahabol sa naturang danyos. Tanging criminal aspect lang daw ang sakop ng government pa prosecutor. Yan ang sitwasyon mula dito sa Senado. Para sa Eagle News, may Ancor Vera ay one with Jenny. Samantala, Department of Justice inatasan na Malacanian na gumamit ng legal action para may balik sa kulungan ang mga hindi kwalipikadong bilanggo na nakinabang sa GCTA law. Ang report mula naman kay Vic Sumintak. Inatasan ng Malacanian ang Department of Justice na gumawa ng legal na hakbang para may balik sa kulungan ang mga hindi kwalipikadong bilanggo na nakinabang sa Good Conduct Time Allowance o GCTA law o Republic Act 10592. Sinabi ng Presidential Legal Advisor at Presidential Spokesman Salvador Panelo na maaaring gamitin ang desisyon ng Korte Suprema na People of the Philippines vs. Tan kung saan binawi ang ibinigay na kalayaan sa isang bilanggo gamit ang GCTA. Ayon kay Panelo, maging ang Article 99 ng Revised Penal Code na nagsasabing final and executory at irrevocable ang pag-apply ng GCTA law sa isang kwalipikadong convicted criminal ay maaaring gamitin. Paliwanag ni Panelo, kung hindi kwalipikado, maaaring bawiin dahil sa ilalim ng provisyon ng Republic Act 10592, hindi kwalipikado ang mga convicted criminal na sangkot sa karumal-dumal na krimen. Kinayag ni Panelo, batay sa record ng Bureau of Corrections, karamihan sa mga binigyan at bibigyan ng maagang kalayaan sa ilalim ng GCTA law ay sangkot sa karumal-dumal na krimen.
Fix sa Mintak Eagle News ay ang 125. Sa iba pang mga mahalagang balita, paglaya ng halos 20,000 bilanggo sa pamamagitan ng GCTA, tinawag na massive jailbreak ng isang kongresista. Ang report naman mula kay Eden Santos. Eden? Yes, Jen, maituturing mo man ng massive jailbreak ang pagpapalaya sa halos 20,000 inmates sa Nobilibid Prison. Ito ang pahayag ni Albay, Representative Ed Silagman, matapos na palayain ang 18,885 persons deprived of liberty o PDLs na na 2,166 na po sa mga ito ay convicted sa iba't ibang karumal-dumal na krimen matapos pagkalooban nga ng Good Conduct Time Allowance o GCTA. Ayon kay Lagman, nagkaroon ng massive jailbreak na may pahintulot pa nga ng mga opisyal ng Bureau of Corrections at Department of Justice. Pero itinanggay ito ni Senior, uh, Chief Senior Superintendent Valencia Faustino, Superintendent ng Davao Penal Farm, na jailbreak ang paglaya ng mga inmates sa ilalim ng GCTA law. Pinasusumiti naman ng House Committee on Justice sa Bucor at DOJ ang lahat ng pangalan at kaso ng mga pinalayang PDL simula 2013 hanggang 2019. Gayun din ang lahat ng bumubuo ng Management Screening and Evaluation Committee o MSEC na responsable sa paglaya ng mga nasabing PDLs. Katwira naman ni DOJ Undersecretary Deo Marco, kailangan na miyandahan ng batas at magkaroon ng particular na probisyon na nag-aatas na isa publiko ang pangalan ng mga inmate na pinagkalooban ng GCTA. Hindi naman sumipot sa briefing ng komite si na Justice Secretary Menardo Guevara, DILG Secretary Eduardo Anyo at Bucor Director General Nicanor Feldon dahil kasabay ng briefing ng pagdinig sa Senado kung saan nakasalang sa investigasyon ang tatlong opisyal. Para sa Eagle News, Eden Santos, I am one with 25. Police na sangkot sa pagbibenta at paggamit ng illegal na droga na aresto ng PNP Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group. Report naman mula kay Mar Gabriel. Naaresto sa Barbas Operation PNP Integrity Monitoring and Enforcement Group o INEG sa Muntinlupa si Patrolman Leo Valdez nasangkot sa pagbebenta at paggamit ng illegal na droga. Nabawi sa kanyang isang libong pisong mark money na ginamit ng posture buyer at isang sachet ng hinihinalang shabu. Bago ang operasyon, matagal nang minomonitor ng IMEG ang sospek na nakuhanan pa ng surveillance video habang humihitit ng shabu. Kanina iniharap siya kay PNP Chief Oscar Albayalde at nakatikim ng matinding sermon habang ipinapanood sa kanya ang kuha ng surveillance video. Si Baltes ay una nang nag-awal noong 2014 dahil sa paggamit ng ilegal na droga pero nakabalik sa serbisyo noong 2017 at kasalukuyang nakatalaga sa Regional Mobile Force Batalyon ng NCRPO. Ayon kay Albayalde, titiyakin niya na tuluyan ang madidismiss sa serbisyo si Baltes at hindi na ulit makakabalik pa sa PNP. Si Baltes uh, si Baltes na ang ika-200 at itong tiwaling pulis na naaresto ng PNP IMEG. Sasampahan siya ng kasong kriminal at kasong administratibo sa PNP Internal Affairs Service. Sa kasalukuyan, nasa 727 na polis pa na sangkot sa illegal na droga ang nasa listahan ng counterintelligence ng PNP at kasalukuyan silang minomonitor. Para sa si Eagle News, Mar Gabriel, I am one with 25. Sa iba pang report, tatlong complainant iniadras ang kasong syndicated staff ha, laban sa mga opisyal ng KAPA. Report mula kay Moira Encina. Iniadras ng mga private complainant ang kasong syndicated staff ha, na inihain nila laban sa mga opisyal ng KAPA Community Ministry International. Sa pagdinig sa DOJ, pinanumpaan sa DOJ panel prosecutors ng dalawa sa tatlong pribadong complainant na sina Kim Ampo at Judith Ledicio ang kanilang affidavit of desistance. Pero bago sila pinanumpa ay tinanong muna ang dalawa ng mga DOJ prosecutors kung naunawaan nila na maaaring mangyari dahil sa pag-urong nila sa kaso. Ipaniluan ng mga piskal sa mga complainant na maaari silang kasuhan ng NBI-NCR na public complainant dahil sa pag-atras nila sa reklamo. Hindi ka naman sina Ampo at Ledicio na itutuloy nila ang pag-atras sa kaso. Batay sa affidavit of the system sina Ampo at Ledicio, ikinatira nila na hindi nila lubos na naintindihan ang uh, kanilang isinampang uh, kaso o demanda laban sa mga kapa officials kaya umuurong na sila sa kaso. Itinang din naman nila sa mga piskal na tinakot o binayaran sila kaya, sila inu- kaya nila inurong ang uh, reklamo. 
nakatakda na mamagain ng hiwalay na affidavit of resistance ang isa pa sa mga private complainant na si Virginia Ampo sa provincial prosecutor dahil may katandaan na ito at hindi na makakaharap sa DOJ. Itinakda naman ang susunod na pagdinig sa September 10. Para sa Igo News, Marie Sina, I'm 125. Mga dahuling lumabag sa unang gabi ng implementasyon ng curfew sa lungsod ng Maynila, umabot na po sa 350 ayon sa Department of Social Welfare. Report naman mula kay Madeline Villar Moratilio. Aabot sa 350 na minor de edad ng huli matapos ang unang implementasyon ng curfew sa lungsod ng Maynila sa nagkalipas na magdamag. Gayun mas na sa 250 lamang umano ang na-turn over sa Manila Department of Social Welfare. Paliwanag ni MDSW Director Remedios Forgoso, ang iba kasi sa mga nahuli ay pinauwi na rin ng mga polis. Nilinaw rin ni Forgoso na pauwi hindi na Manila ang 250 kabata ang na-rescue. Unang offense pa lang naman kasi anya ito at naunawaan nila na maaring may iba talagang hindi pa nakakaalam ng implementasyon ng curfew. Ilang sa mga na-rescue ay mga estudyante, may ilan naman ang galing sa computer shop at galing sa kaibigan. Ang mga na-rescue kagabi ay isinailalim na rin anya sa profiling at counseling sa Manila Reception and Action Center. Kung may sundo silang magulang ay i-re-release anya ang mga ito. Habang ang wala namang sundo ay uh, dadalhin sa mga district social welfare o barangay. Pero ang care for those of ikasong paglabag ay i na nila ang pagsapataw ng parang sa umunta sa mga lalabag sa curfew. Para sa Eagle News, Madeline Villar Moratilio, I'm one with 25. At yan na po naging kabuhan ng ating mga balita sa pangalan po ng ating mga hagapay sa Eagle News Service. Ako po si GEN Jen Subar Diaga. Susunod na ang Lakers and Music dito sa Net25 at Now and Then. Kasama naman si Julie Fernando sa Radyo Aguila.